So a lot of people think that all magnesiums are created equal. You go to the grocery store, you go to the pharmacy, you pick up a magnesium, and the problem is solved. Okay, maybe you're on some kind of new diet protocol and you need to add magnesium into your diet, or your doctor says you need magnesium. So you go and you pick up basic magnesium. And you're wondering if it's really doing the trick. And you know, over time, you realize it's not really doing much. Well, you might not be getting the magnesium that you need for your specific need of your body, right? You're not getting the right one. So what I wanna break down are the nine most common forms of magnesium. There technically are a few more, but they're really fairly insignificant in the grand scheme of things. So we're talking about the nine forms of magnesium here. I'm gonna break them down, give you uh, what you would use each particular one for, and how they work, and how they're derived, and how they're combined, and chelated, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gonna make it very simple. The first one is going to be magnesium chloride. Okay, magnesium chloride, if you look on the back of a label, you look on the back of any magnesium product and you see magnesium chloride, it's important that you know what it's for. So magnesium chloride is interesting because it has a stability constant that's close to zero. Right now, at the beginning of this video, that sounds Greek, right? What the heck is a stability constant? It basically means that it converts more easily into an ionic form. So magnesium chloride has a stability constant close to zero, which means that it just dissolves and dissipates into water into your body relatively easy. So that sounds like a good thing, but not always the case, okay? It has a pretty specific need uh, when it comes down to why you would use magnesium chloride. We're usually talking about hydrochloric acid issues, gastric acid issues within your stomach. So it's not like you wanna go take a magnesium chloride because you're low on energy or because you have muscle cramps, okay? It can help you a little bit to that degree, but you're not gonna get the most effect. So the benefits of mag chloride actually come from the extra chloride. Sure, the magnesium plays a role too, but the chloride is really what does the thing. So it helps the issues of a steady decline of hydrochloric acid as we age. So we have a, a, like the steady decline of hydrochloric acid, which causes acid reflux and causes all kinds of issues, believe it or not, because we're not producing as much. So it ends up messing up the whole process. We end up having too much in one area because we're not producing enough, yada, yada. So it helps boost the production of those gastric acids. So that's where magnesium chloride really comes into play. So you don't wanna be buying magnesium chloride if you're having like say muscle cramps. It's not necessarily the best thing, right? Okay, so now let's go ahead and move into number two, which is magnesium oxide. This is probably the most common one that you're going to see when you go to the grocery store. It's like the most common basic one, but is it what you really want? Well, let's break it down. So usually magnesium oxide becomes magnesium oxide by being combined with oxygen in kind of its natural form. So an example, it's mostly exposed to oxygen in seabeds. So they'll take salt and sodium and all this stuff that also has all these other minerals. Okay, we've got, of course, our magnesium, everything like that, that's sitting in a seabed and it's being exposed to oxygen. Of course, we have a wide variety of oxidation because it all depends on where in the world it is, where the seabed is, how long it was sitting. So we don't have a real solid idea of how much oxygen it's actually been coupled with, right? What the oxidation level is. It is the most common form because it's the cheapest and the easiest. It doesn't require a whole lot of processing. The problem is it's less than a 4% absorption rate, okay? So it's non-chelated, which means it's not bound to an amino acid that would allow it to get into the system. So you really want to have magnesium be chelated with some kind of amino acid, like uh, magglycinate or um, mag-threonate or mag -torate. Okay, so we'll talk about all those in a minute. You want a chelated form, for the most part, for absorption. So you're, you're getting a very little bit of absorption. So if you go to your local pharmacy and you pick up an inexpensive magnesium, this is more likely what you're going to get. Now, magnesium citrate. This might be one that your doctor has had you take before you get a colonoscopy, right? Have you ever seen this? Okay, so magnesium citrate is magnesium plus citric acid. The way that magnesium citrate works is pretty interesting. It's the magnesium and citric acid, they have opposite charged ions or atoms. So in this case, what's happening is this is creating a gradient where water called passive diffusion can come into the intestinal tract. So it draws water in. So this is why it is so good when you need to clear out your intestinal tract. Like if you're constipated, this is gonna help. However, it stimulates those, you know, those muscle cells to be a little bit more relaxed. So the smooth muscle cells within your, your intestinal tract, small intestine and large intestine. A little bit goes a long way with this stuff, okay? If you have too much magnesium citrate, you end up with, well, you can do the math, okay? So it's very easy to overdo it. You're not getting magnesium absorbed into your body, really. It's staying localized within the intestinal tract. It's, a, it's still a non-chelated form in the sense that it's just drawing water in. It's bound to an acid, so it's trying to create a gradient so you draw water in. Only use that if you really need it. Magnesium glycinate. This is one of my favorite ones. Magnesium glycinate is what you wanna use if maybe you're 
a little bit jittery, or maybe you're having a hard time falling asleep, or maybe you're just a little bit more wound up. Maybe you're someone that's uh, just suffering from about a stress at this point in time. So it has a very powerful calming effect, which is why it's perfect before sleep. So this is what I would usually use if I'm having a hard time falling asleep. I don't use it every night. I use it if I feel a little bit wound up. Maybe my day was just a little bit more chaotic. Maybe I just had lots of things flowing in my brain. I just wanted to kind of relax a little bit. So it's bound with glycine, which already has powerful sleep promoting properties anyway. It's not to say you can't take this any other time. I just think before bed makes a lot of sense. Now it is chelated, okay, so it absorbs a lot faster and a lot better because it's bound to that amino acid. So it doesn't just stay in your digestive system, it gets into the bloodstream and does its job. It's also resilient to stomach acids. So it makes it so that you don't have this breakdown where it denatures the magnesium and makes it so you're just not absorbing it. So it's resilient to the stomach acid and then because it's chelated, it gets absorbed better. And it's really the powerful effects of the glycine that really do the job too. So we have magnesium that of course is relaxing you, but then glycine has an effect on cooling your body. So glycine makes it so that blood flow actually changes a little bit, dissipates in different ways. So you actually cool down and you are shown to fall asleep much better if your body's in a cooler state. So glycine helps the body stay cool. If you wake up in the middle of the night because you're hot and you have uh, you know, night sweats, anything like that, that glycine can help and mag glycinate is going to be really, really powerful there. And by the way, I know I'm talking about all of these right now, and I'm talking about all of these, but if you guys want to check out just all of these different magnesiums and maybe even get an ultimate magnesium bundle that kind of has them all broken down, go ahead and check out Jigsaw Health down below in the description. So I've been on the advisory board for Jigsaw for, wow, like three, three and a half years now, and they're awesome. They've published a study surrounding the world of magnesium, one of the first magnesium companies to actually go out and publish their own study surrounding absorption. So I highly encourage you to check them out. The reason I mention that is because their mag glycinate, mag now, is really awesome. And it's the one that I would usually mix into with a little bit of water drink before I go to bed. But anyhow, they've got a full spectrum, a full magnesium bundle that they've put together specifically for those that are watching this video. So after you learn everything you need to know about magnesium, just check them out down in the description. They're a sponsor of this channel. They've done some awesome things and just they're just worth checking out. So make sure you do. Okay, now we go over to mag malate or malate, potato, potato. Uh, I'd say more people probably call it malate. But mag malate is bound to malic acid, okay? Malic acid is naturally produced by our cells, okay? It's not like it's some weird extra thing that they're combining it with, not a chemical or anything like that. Now, the reason that mag malate is so great is it's specifically good for our energy levels and for our muscles. A lot of people will take mag malate or dimagnesium malate or anything like that to help out muscle cramps. That's where it's really widely known. So that's really powerful for that. But the reason that this all works, specifically like in the muscle cell and stuff, is it helps, the, uh, helps it transport it in and out of the mitochondria. So the malate that the magnesium is bound to helps the magnesium transport in and out of the mitochondria, which we need that magnesium getting into the mitochondria. Otherwise, we have a big problem because it allows the body to make ATP. ATP is our energy. Without our energy, we don't have life, right? Now, ATP requires magnesium to actually create energy. It's called mag ATP, right? So without magnesium being bound to ATP, the energy isn't actually even useful. So the malic acid reverses the inhibition of glycolysis as well. So all this basically means is it means when our body is under stress, like when we're working out, it makes it so that the mitochondria can still produce energy, even in a state of hypoxia with less oxygen. So if you're going up to altitude or you have a hard workout, this is really good to take. But it's also really good to take if you just want more energy overall and you don't want to feel stiff and you want to feel like your muscles are actually working and not cramping. Okay, and again, Jigsaw is really widely known for their dimagnesium malate, a very specific kind of this that, again, is down in that bundle. Okay, then we've got magnesium sulfate, also known as Epsom salt, all right? We're not going to spend a lot of time here because I will be honest, we don't see a whole lot of benefit from it, okay? People will take Epsom salt baths in the hopes that it relaxes you but the studies are pretty inconclusive. We don't see a whole lot of evidence. We can't tell if it's being absorbed through the skin, the little effect that does occur, or if it's actually coming in through our respiration when we take a hot bath. The fact is, we don't really know. But all it is is magnesium, sulfur, and oxygen, and if you drink it, you will be sorry. It's not gonna hurt you, but it's definitely gonna flush you out, okay? Then we have magnesium orotate. Okay, so this is an interesting one. This one's really good if you're uh, pushing your body to a limit, like you're, uh, an, high-powered athlete, we're doing a lot of high-intensity work. Mag malate's good too, but mag rotate will help you out here as well. So mag plus erotic acid, it's a heterocyclic compound. So basically what it does is it helps the body produce more ATP. Okay, whereas mag malate helps support the natural ATP production that's happening, 
Magorotate actually can increase production, increase your performance. Uh, it spares the extra ATP to be used for performance. So normally we have some ATP that gets diffused into other processes within the body that kind of make it just a waste in a lot of ways. This forces it to be used for performance. So it allows the muscles to use it, allows us to create energy the way we need it. Uh, it also turns into beta alanine, which beta alanine has a lactic acid or a lactate buffering process. So beta alanine's in a lot of pre-workouts. It's in a lot of pre-workout compounds because it buffers the lactic acid. It buffers the, uh, that burn that you would get, right? So if we can buffer that, then we can work out longer and harder. So it's pretty cool. Magorotate is definitely a performance-based one. So a lot of times you'll see these hand in hand, okay? People will take those together because they, they work together. Magnalate, recovery, cramping, magorotate, a little extra boost of performance, all working along that ATP pathway. Then we have mag threonate. Okay, this is all about the brain, okay? I love this one. In fact, between mag glycinate and mag threonate, those are my two favorites, okay? Mag threonate I take before I film simply because it boosts my mental function. It really does, and it's proven, okay? So basically the threonate makes it so that magnesium can get into the brain. That's all there is to it. So magnesium increases synaptic density. So basically when you have two neurons that are communicating with each other, the synaptic cleft and that synapse between the two needs to be dense for information to be able to pass through. Think of it as like the density of like a one lane road versus an eight lane superhighway, right? If you have more density between synapse or in that synapse, then more information can cross and you get more just information at a faster rate. And then the plasticity means that we can move the road. Imagine being able to drive down the road and see your intersection up ahead or see the road that you need to be on and just magically being able to like create a road <laughs> that gets you to that other road. Or it's like when you can see your destination really far away, but the road takes you around a big winding curve. What if you could draw a straight line and just make yourself go there? That's plasticity. So your brain is always looking for shortcuts. And if we can actually give it the ability to create shortcuts with magnesium, we're in a great spot. Big issue though. Magnesium doesn't get into the brain very easily. So if it's bound with three and eight, it can get into the brain. It allows it to get through that blood-brain barrier. Okay, so again, Jigsaw has their brain boost, which is in that bundle too, but you can get mag three and eight in a lot of places. You just gotta make sure you're getting a good quality one. Lastly, I wanna talk about magnesium taurate. This is essentially magnesium that's bound with taurine, another chelated one. And it calms the central nervous system in a different way. So it calms the central nervous system via gamma aminobutyric acid, via GABA. Okay, so this helps you get a nice sense of calm, relaxation. Uh, it helps scavenge reactive oxygen species that are created by, by white blood cells. So if you have an injury or if you're sick, mag torate could be really good because it helps scavenge free radicals. And if you're under a lot of stress, it's a good one to take. It's not gonna necessarily help calm you down, but it's gonna help combat the side effects of being stressed. So it's almost like mag torate works really well with some of these other ones simply because it's going to help you combat the stress, whereas some of these other ones are gonna help you have the performance. So it's like, gets rid of the side effects of stress, helps you power through the stress. It's kind of the simplest way to put it. So anyway, now you have the breakdown of nine types of magnesium. No more confusion out there. Do your own homework so you're not just buying a cheap one that's literally gonna go right through you. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you in the next video.